Okay, good morning everyone. How are we all doing today? All right. Actually, I'm going to speak to you from my new little microphone. I haven't really had a chance. I've got a review going on with it. I'm going to be posting that, but what I did want to talk about is this build that I just finished. I spent five hours. I'm sure if you watch the other video, you probably pick up on that. I spent five hours yesterday putting this thing together. I did a complete build from the CPU with the board in it. I decided to pull it apart and put it back together because there was some things I wanted to straighten out on it, such as some wiring. I wanted to change out a couple other fans. I decided not to go with the, um, the fans that came with it. Needless to say, they will get the job done, but compared to the fans that are in it, it's not even close. So we're going to get on to what I did. This case is an MSI case. Um, it's a, geez, now I'm drawing a blank. You can probably just look it right up. I know I should be the one doing it for you, but it's something like a, I think a D100 MSI. Anyways, I'm going to be putting this for sale. A final price will be going out as soon as I get everything put together because what's going out in this case is going to be all MSRP it's going to be for what I paid for it not a penny more and I get it for MSRP I get it from a distributor who gets it directly from the manufacturer as I said before I'm not a pirate never have been never will I don't even know what a bot looks like or works like okay so what we have here Is an MSI, I want to say it's a mid-tower, but it's a compact mid-tower. It isn't a little micro one. And I was thinking that this card was going to probably be too big for the case. But then again, I see people stuffing 3090s in them little 12 by something boxes. I mean, micro cases. I, I don't even, I, I don't know. I, I get it in a way, but... I'm getting off track here. I just, like, I'm, I'm just trying to say, I, I don't know, unless you're really, really pressed on space, man, I, I would never stick all my components inside a, a little 9x9x12K. Nine by nine by that's, that's bad. Anyways, all right. Other than it being an MSI case, I added to it, it has a thermal take, 750 watt power supply, which will run this. If I get an 850, 950 in before this gets sold, I will put it in. If it gets sold with the 750, when I get in bigger ones, whether it's even a 1200, if the person is being stuck on power, they can pull this 750 out send it back to me I will send them a larger more powerful and it will be a good PSU anyways start out it has a 240 millimeter thermal take AIO in it it's very nice it's got a square block. It actually looks kind of like an octagon, but it's ARGB. When I put windows in it, I'll do a little video on it starting with benchmarks. One of my subscribers mentioned to me they would like to see more benchmarks on this card. So that's what I'm going to do is strictly a all benchmark review of this card in this case. And it will give it a chance to burn in. The water cooler is mounted up top. All right. It has a two-in-one fan. I eliminated that 30 feet of cable that came with. I don't know what thermal tank. I just, I, I just don't get, I don't get it. Anyways, it has a much better fan. Two-in-one. Two-one-twenties. Going on to the board... We have an ASUS Rogue Strix B1 
B550E. And I stress the E because if you get the F, it's a nice board, the F. It's about $100 less expensive, but it is not this board. This board is specifically made with higher quality components, the PCIe lanes are closer to the CPU and give you much faster, much better performance. The F version of this, it's still a gaming board, but it's not made for extreme overclocking the way this is. It has a Ryzen 5800X in it. It's brand new. I think those are going for like 450, but I've been seeing them on sales. It has a one terabyte Muskin M.2 SSD in it. If needed, I can always throw in a little extra storage, but I'm already cutting this tight. The video card. The video card is a power color 6900 XT Ultimate. I've spoken about this card. OG. I think it's OGS from Greece. I'm drawing a blank on it now. This is the air cooled card that he broke the overclocking world record with. I don't know if it's still standing, but this is the card that he did it with. It outperformed every card, including all the NVIDIAs. And actually, when I reviewed it, it slapped my 3080 around in gaming. AMD does have its own version of DLSS now coming. It's that high resolution um, stuff. Probably needs to be worked on, but I'm sure it's going to be just as good in the future. Ray tracing technology, this has it as well. But it's AMD's version, and they don't push big, big on it. I don't know why, but I'm sure they will in the future. All the cables on here, they're all made by Asia Haas, black and gray cables. It's, this is all I use. I do like cable mods cables, but they're made of more of a cloth material. And they're very easily to get dirty. And for me, being in and out of computers a lot. And you're also paying twice the money. Asia Haas, great quality. Never failed me. Love them. Windows 10 will be going inside of this case. You're going to notice that I had to take this off because the card is so big it was pushing up against the little metal bracket back here we have three display ports one HDMI we have all of our speaker it has two USB C's four US well one of the USB's on it is a um, used for BIOS flashing which I used it has a BIOS flash switch if you want to flash back the BIOS um, these look like probably 2.0 USBs and we have three or 3.1 yes the SS is 3.1 it also has display port and HDMI on it which most people don't use as well as the Wi-Fi which is going with it on the back of the case and I haven't finished everything yet it's just gonna take me a couple of minutes it has its own little hub. Everything's controlled from the top of the of the case. And also there's a controller here that works with some of the ARGB. Some people don't like it, and if you don't, all you gotta do is reach in there and it's all done. Five volt, three pin ARGB. On the top of the case, it has a power switch tilt this up it has a power switch it's in the shape of the MSI logo it has a reset button it has a speaker 3.5 it has a microphone 3.5 and they all work 
It has two 2.0 USBs and it has a button for LED. I wouldn't be surprised if you could turn it off right from there. Don't mind the noise. I ended up going in the front. I pulled the fans out. I came with two MSI fans. They were probably, I wouldn't say low quality. They absolutely weren't high. I put a very high quality, high static pressure, three in one Cooler Master set of fans. So instead of two fans, it has three. I know why they did it with one and one because of the bar being here. But no matter what, having three in there is still going to pull more air. And it's going to need it because it's going to be going right onto this card. The good thing is about this card, it's wide open. It's not closed up like my Asus. It's wide open. It gets a lot of ventilation. It does run pretty cool. The thermals on it are very good. It has a metal back plate. It has a metal kind of a shroud with plastic on the inside. Aluminum fin fins with a nickel plated heat sink that is made of all copper. On the back of the case, this isn't the original fan. This fan is an MSI fan that came with a pretty much a lot bigger, a, a lot, it's a lot better quality than the one that was there. I don't even want to show you the one that was there. I think I just threw it away. Um, it's also going to have 32 gigs. Right now I only have two sticks in there, two eights of, um, what is it? Um, crucial, crucial ballistic. Couldn't see it from here. Crucial ballistic. Yeah, you normally don't put windows in with all 32, and then you got to go XMP and all that stuff. You guys know that. Um, I did change all the thermal pads to a higher quality thermal pad that's gone inside of the um, M.2. When I did it on mine. I noticed a huge difference. It was huge. The factory, let's face it, as I've said before, Asus, these companies, they make great stuff. But when it comes to the lesser components that you don't see, they put probably the top of the line of the lower end. This if you get what I'm saying, they they don't go out and get the number one everything. They have to cut some, they have to cut corners somewhere to save some money. The stuff that's in there is the top of the line. Okay, almost wrapped up over here, and that is pretty much about it. I know there was something else I wanted to talk about, but I guess that just about covers it. It's clean. It's going to run cool. And I'm going to go put Windows 11 in my system because I've had this beta version with the update in it. So I think it's time to give it a try. Yeah, I already made a clone of my other drive. So, <laughs> you know. Um, all right, hopefully everything sounds good with this microphone. I am kind of figured I'd use it instead of the Yeti. Give it a shot. See how it worked. I know, looks just like a Yeti, doesn't it? Except it's a miniature Yeti. It's got a 3.5 for the headset. It's got a volume control for the headset. It has a gain on it. It has a mute button. $60, I got it on Amazon. It got great reviews. I didn't feel like spending $130, $140 on another microphone because when you're doing this kind of stuff, you really don't need to go out and get professional quality st stuff. Even I've got filters that can clear this up to make it sound like a $3,000 mic. Anyways, all right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me jump back, back, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. People, I know you watch. You keep coming back to watch. I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a like. And if I'm doing something wrong, tell me what I'm doing wrong. 
This way I could get the likes. But anyways, it's great to have you here. And I, I, I do hope the channel continues to grow and, and get better. And I hope some of the information that I'm giving you does help. So everybody stay safe and have a great day.